Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about that another declarative action called EXF client. So in our past video, we have created a declarative action called resolve button. This is a complete new declarative action. And this declarative action, when you click that, uh, it's supposed to or it is actually getting resolved our incident. Now what we want? We want to make this declarative action as a UXF client. What does it mean with that? So it means that whenever you click the resolve button, there should be a pop-up open and that should be through that UXF client uh, declarative action. So if you go back to our declarative action, uh, you have seen that implemented as, under this implemented as, we have a server script, we have a client script. Another most important and useful uh, implemented as called UXF client. So what is UXF client? UXF client is a uh, new type of declarative action that help you to do uh, or create a declarative action. So what does it use that? It have a very uh, good features that can allow you to do less coding and do a lot of stuff. So let's see how we can do that. Before we come to that UXF client, this component, I have little bit changes in our uh, uh, pages. So let me show you that what I have done here. So I have created a uh, pop-up. So if I click, I have, you can see that I have added a button in the top. This is a demo button for the time being. We'll remove that button later. So this is a demo button I have created. If you click this button, you can see a pop-up is coming. So this pop-up is coming. Now this pop-up should be came up whenever you click this resolve button, not this button. So this is a demo button or for uh, uh, show you that. So I have created a pop-up. When you click this button, a pop-up is coming, right? So similar button or similar thing should be happen when you click this resolve button, a pop-up should be open. That's the first steps. And then whatever you selected that. So let's say that you selected a uh, three incident and then you click that uh, resolve button for the example. You selected that, uh, you know, close quote and close note and click resolve. These three uh, incident should be resolved automatically. So that's what I'm looking for. Now, you could say that the pop-up is coming so easily, so uh, nicely, like you added the buttons and you are calling that button and it is so easy. Uh, why we need to create a declarative action? The reason behind the declarative action is that we don't know which all items are selected, right? So we don't know which all items are selected here. And also, uh, uh, if you see that it is hard to place this button in between here or maybe inside these groups. So this is very hard, right? So in that case, we should use the declarative action. So using the declarative action, we can achieve this functionality. Also, you could say that why we cannot use the client side. Using the client side, we could have show the pop-up, right? You could probably show that pop-up, but it is very complex to do that. Instead of that, you can simply use that UXF client and using the UXF client, you can uh, do that. So let me show you that how quickly I have created this uh, modal dialog. I have go here called um, a workspace and then I have added a models called the resolve. Uh, if you does not know that how to create the models, you can go and check my uh, previous video. So I have created a models called a resolve and everything is drag and drop. I added a stylized context called confirms. Then here I have added one uh, simple, uh, uh, you know, stylized text. And then after that, I have created another stylized text called close quote. And here I have added the drop down. And this drop down value I have added, a hard coded manually called duplicate, known error, user error. I drop down, I put that manual drop down value. And then I have added a text area here. And then I have added a button. You can see this is the buttons uh, under this footer. Okay. Also, I have created one, uh, you know, uh, you could have see that uh, client state parameter I have created called incident record uh, so that I can print something. So this client state parameter, what is client state parameter? You know that this is a page variable that I have placed under uh, uh, here called, you can see this is the client state parameter I have added. So this is simple a drop down or you can say the simple a, a pop up box or models I have created. And this model actually getting called, I have added before the body, I've added this button called button three. This is I'm calling from here. So this is a simple a steps I have performed. Now, what do you want? We want to create a custom event. Why we need custom event? Custom event is needed to call from the our declarative action. So first thing first, we have to create our custom event. To do or to work with that EXF client action, we need to create a custom event first. 
So let's create a custom event. To create a custom event, you have to go to the body section. Under this body, if you scroll down, you will be able to see called handled event. So under this handled event, you can create your custom event. So our event name called incident. Some of the, anything you can put that. Okay. So this is our uh, event name we have declared. Okay. And in, in this event, what we are going to pass? We are going to pass the incident IDs. So we are going to put a uh, payload. Under this payload, we are going to define a name called incident IDs. So this is the, our uh, payload name. So we are going to put called incident IDs. Okay. So we have defined a parameter. You could have said that this is payload is nothing but a parameter. So whenever the event is going to be called, we are going to pass some incident sys ID, multiple incident sys ID, one incident sys ID, something like that. So we are going to put call incident IDs. So this is our uh, payload name. We could click add. So our event is created. So this is our event is created. Now what do you want? So this event can be called from multiple places. You can call this from the body, you can call from the page, wherever is needed. So whenever this event is going to be called, what do you want? We want to do something, right? What do you want? We'll click this event mapping and then you can see that here we have incident resolve pop up. We click that. What do you want? We want to open a or open or close dialog. So this should be open. And here, which um, pop-up should be open the resolve incident pop-up should be open we click add so the resolve incident pop-up should be open so you can see that our open or closed dialog model will be open okay so we registered this event from here and then once we registered that we are declaring that what should be happen we are saying that it should open the dialog model now what is the next steps the next step is that we'll go to this button and in this button, instead of this calling open or close modal dialog directly, what we are going to do that we are going to delete that. We are going to call our own event. So let's see our event name called incident resolve pop up. So this event we are going to call that. And in this event, we can pass some value. So you can see that in this event or whenever we are calling this event, we can pass this incident ID, multiple incident ID, we can pass that. So we are not putting or we are not going to pass anything at that moment. We will simply say, let's say that I'll put that one, two, three for the timing. So what will be happen? Instead of directly call that open or close pop up, it is going to call our custom event called incident resolve uh, pop up. And this incident, uh, this incident resolve pop up, what will be happen? This button or these things is actually uh, event is going to call our, uh, you know, event mapping called open or close pop-up and that will open our pop-up. That's it. So let's go back our uh, workspace. And then this time if we click this button, button should be open our pop-up. You can see the open, uh, this pop-up is opening. Okay. Uh, how this um, button is opening the pop-up? Because this time it is opening through this custom event. Now, what do you want? We want to create a declarative action called resolve incident and then type we have selected EXF client action. Here, it have a uh, specified payload. We need to define a payload. Okay. So, we we'll click this and open it in your, uh, you know, another tab and here we are going to create the new button. So, this is the payload where we can define the payload. So, let's say that our key name called incident uh, Then here, apply to where we want to apply. We want to apply under list. So we'll select the list. Another important parameter called payload. What is the payload? The payload is something that we are going to pass from our uh, declarative action. What we want to pass? We want to pass if we go here under this body and then we go here. We want to pass the incident ID. So we'll say that uh, for the time being, incident IDs and what should be the value the default value say that uh, one two three we don't know what is the value at the moment initial right so this you can declare the initial value or we can say that blank so we'll say the blank okay and save that so this action payload we are saying that um, this is will be our key and here we are going to map that 
so this incident id is our payload now what we want we will go here and then put this to incident resolve this under this declarative action we are going to select this specific uh, specific client action okay and then simply save that so what we did we have created a button called resolve called resolve incident here we have selected you accept client we have created a payload the payload we are passing a uh, we are actually putting a call payload call incident ids and at that moment we are passing that as a blank okay also we have created a event custom event called incident result pop up and that is actually opening our pop up right what is the next steps so we have created this button we have created a event right next step is that we have to do a event mapping what is the event mapping event mapping is a place where it is saying that from where to where it should do okay so for example i will say that uh, incident and then here we need to put the source id source id is nothing but from where this button is going to be called our case the button is called uh, list header so we'll copy this source id so we'll copy this source id go and paste here called source id and then declarative action called resolve incident we have a called micro component so micro component is nothing but a page name what is our page name our page name we can go to this simply called settings and then here default list page so this is the page name we can go and paste our page name here now target event what is the target event the target event is the event that we are going to call and our event name called incident resolve pop up this event we want to map so we'll put here call mapping here now after that we have a another important uh, target payload mapping so what is the target payload mapping target payload mapping is saying that from this button to this page what we are actually mapping we'll come this little in detail so i'll copy this payload mapping for the time being and paste here what is is meaning that i'll come in details so you can see that in this case i have two uh two uh mapping so i will remove that first uh one mapping so let's remove that one mapping so we'll go here this is the one mapping so we'll remove this this section and we'll remove this comma also so this have a one mapping okay now here you can see two fields is saying so this two fields is nothing but uh, this parameter called incident id will place here what is this json will come little bit later um, so we'll copy this thing and then uh, paste under this mapping and let's save that so let's understand that overall process whatever we have performed the first thing is that we have created a declarative action called resolve incident so we have created a declarative action then choose as a option called uxf client after that we have created a event So this is called action payload so we have created action payload definition so we have created called action payload definition and here we define a json parameter then we created a uh, custom event then we have actually mapped that custom event and then last under fifth step we have define call uh, here call ux add on event mapping and then where we have actually put a json mapping that you can see in the bottom so let's revise one more time so we have created ux under this ux client action first we have created a declarative action called resolve incident under this we have selected call uxf client action uxf client action we have created that after that we created the action payload definition action payload definition here we define one parameter called incident ids so this is we define in a json parameter after that we created a custom event under call incident resolve button here we map what we want we want to open a 
pop up so we map there so pop up we define there after that what i did actually we go here under this ux add event mapping we created a mapping and here under this mapping we have put a source id uh you know declarative action page name and then uh, event name now here we have k uh, do a target payload mapping so we have do a target what is this target payload mapping this target payload mapping is saying that it should be mapped between this and this what this this one is the payload this is a payload of action payload this mapping should be mapped with our this is another call uh, event parameter right so even payload so this one should be map with this one that it is saying through this payload okay so this is pretty much standard you can copy paste or you can use that in your uh, um script so here you can see that if it is twice or two you can just put comma and then you can just repeat the same thing with that uh, multiple for multiple uh, if you have multiple parameter okay now let's refresh our uh, workspace and see that if we click resolve button this pop up is opening or not so we'll go here and click resolve button and you can see the pop up is opening so this pop up is opening from this button and this pop up also opening from this button so this is great so both the cases both the uh, right now from the declarative action we can actually making the pop up now i want to move under this edit section so let's do that we'll go here and then click groups and here we'll select that groups name call and if we refresh right now our workspace that button should be moved under this edit section so if we select two button and you can see that the resolve button is showing here if we click resolve button the pop up is opening so th this is great so in the next session we are going to do that we are going to pass the data so we now we want to pass this incident information like whatever button is selected to here right so that we are going to do our next session